All right, second day of Schomburg. Wait, where'd Emily go? Is she, Emily? Are you in there? Your toilet paper smells bad here. What? There. The toilet paper smells bad. Why are you smelling toilet paper? I had to blow my nose and then it doesn't smell good. Here, smell. Hey, doesn't it smell bad? Was, was that used toilet paper? No, it wasn't used toilet paper. Was it? No. Wait, how did we get here? Oh, that is a good question. We haven't grabbed breakfast yet. We can't uh, be here yet. I guess we have to go back there. It's day two of the expo. I'm so excited. Ed is not. He's, he's tired. He's really not a morning people, guys. But I'm excited for this. People. I'm a people now. Oh, did I say that? <laughs> I need caffeine. So I've got this drink from Margaret at Terra Tiger Studios who dropped it off for me. So I'm set and I have a monster somewhere too. So I'm, I'm good. And so this video is going to be part two of the Schaumburg NARBC where we're going to focus on uh, the animals at the show and the vendors at the show. We're going to uh, interview some of the vendors today uh, and we're still going to be selling merch, but somehow we're going to also find a way to film the video from a shopper's perspective and that'll be today's video so we're gonna go to the show and see <laughs> among other things, but we're focusing on axolotls today. So what morphs do you, do you breed? Um, so we have got melanoids, coppers, lucies, and golden albinos. What's your favorite morph of all those? The coppers. The coppers? Yep. Why is that? Um, because they're just really, really a pretty color. Um, they all have uh, the green fluorescent protein, uh, so mm. they do glow in the dark if you shine a black light on them. That's really um, cool. What's one tip you would give somebody who wants to get an axolotl? Um, I would say pick a very um, good tank that has a lot of um, like longer, not as deep. So you want um, like a 50 gallon low boy, 40 gallon breeder, a 20 gallon long, something like that where they're going to have more floor space. Would you recommend a smaller tank for a baby and a larger tank for an adult? Or just throw a baby right into a big tank? You could put a baby in a big tank. Really? There's um, no issues with that? Yep. Nope. You could wow. put a baby in a big tank. Um, if you have a baby, you don't want to do any kind of substrate. No sand, no gravel, um, no rocks or anything like that. Because they eat it? Yes. They're and cute. they get impacted. Yeah, there's like one brain cell, I think, bouncing around in their little <laughs> heads. But they're so cute, they, they get away yes. with it. Okay, so no substrate. Yep. What is the best diet, in your opinion, for an axolotl? Worms. Real earthworms. Earth? Just plain old earthworms. Absolutely. Oh, I mean, they are a type of salamander, and like yes. tiger salamanders, their complete diet is earthworms. Yes. So, makes sense. Yep. Hundred cool. percent earthworms. The bigger they are, the bigger worms they eat. What's the good size? Like, how do you know what size of earthworm to give them? Um. So it's just by trial and error. Okay. Um, you Sometimes you'll start with half of a worm. And if they get it down, then the next time you might do a full worm, um, they will spit it out. They will not eat anything that's too big for them. So if you see them spitting it out, that just means kind of cut it in half and try again. Oh, well, thank you for all the information. Yes, where, thank you. Where can somebody go if they want to check out your axolotls for sale? Um, Triple Crown Exotics. We are on Facebook, Instagram. Perfect. Thank go you. Go check out Triple Crown Exotics. Thanks so much for your time, Thank Nina. you. Flies, aka bugs you go by? Yep, bugs. bugs. Okay, yep. so this is Bugs with Ecoflies and he specializes in black soldier fly larvae. So can you teach us about how amazing black soldier fly larvae are? Yes, yeah, so black soldier fly larvae are great feeder insect for reptiles. They have 20 to 80 times more calcium than the regular mealworm or dubia roach and they also have a naturally balanced uh, calcium to phosphorus ratio which makes them a really good and calcium is really absorbable. You don't have to dust them with calcium powder. Although you still should dust other feeder insects with calcium powder mm -hmm. and they're also really good for the environment because they can help upcycle uh, food waste from grocery stores and breweries we actually go to breweries the place that makes like beer and alcohol yep. and we take those grains and we feed it to these black soldier fly larvae and they almost like totally get rid of it turn it into protein and fat that then the reptiles eat and it totally is awesome because we don't 
have to, it doesn't have to go to a landfill. And for every one pound, these black soldier fly larvae, uh, about 3,000 large black soldier fly larvae, we can divert about 20 pounds of organic food waste from going to a landfill. That's crazy because I knew that they were a good feeder because of the balanced calcium phosphorus ratio, especially really high, being really high in calcium. But I did not know about the being eco-friendly. Yeah. Or is that just how you do it? It's an eco-friendly way? Um, no, there's actually a huge developing industry here and overseas of getting rid of food waste and all types of different types of byproducts from the agricultural industry and upcycling it into this awesome protein and fat and calcium resource. They're even using some of the fats to make biodiesel and cosmetics too. That is awesome. And medicine as well. What reptiles are black soldier fly larvae a good feeder for? Yes, so that's a great question. So they're really good for leopard geckos, bearded dragons, and I found that a lot of the arboreal stuff love the fly form of it. So oh. it can be really good to get like chameleons per se, like they'll get their honey instincts going and they'll just pounce on the flies. And a lot of my customers actually prefer it in the fly stage. So that's awesome. Because I know they, they turn into flies and a lot of people are like, oh no, they're bad now. Yeah. But you can still feed them off as flies. Yes, yes. Cool. Yep. So if people want to check out your BSFL, they can yes. go to ecoflies.com. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Yep. All right, go check them out. and exotics and as you can see they breed tegus so can you explain what we have here uh, so this is albino red tegu pure red albino and uh, these guys are actually pretty new gene that's been coming around they're gorgeous is this full size uh, no so this is okay. about an eight month old okay um, okay so they still got a lot of growing the reds are some of the bigger ones the blues are a lot smaller than this this is actually a blue albino this one's adorable and so these guys are gonna stay a lot smaller than How old the is reds. That one? Uh, four weeks old is it really? Yeah. So Four they're, weeks? Yeah, they're fresh. Oh, they're so smooth, too. Yeah, they're very nice. We have a, an Argentine black and white, and like, you know, the pearly um, texture to the back, yeah. that's totally different from a baby. Yeah, very cool. How? Another cool thing about these albino reds is that there's the xanthic gene, okay. or an anery gene, that actually uh, is a pure red, and we're going to be mixing these with those and pre creating a snow. An all-white tegu? All-white tegu, with black are eyes. Are those already produced? They are a thing? The hybrid. Okay, oh, I see. Wow, that's going to be really nice. An all white tegu. Yeah, Sweet. Cool. So, since you're specializing in tegus, what have you found so that we can learn is the best diet for a tegu? So, they'll pretty much eat anything. Uh, yeah, they will. We do ground turkey, chicken, okay. uh, rabbit. We do a lot of fruit. We'll actually take a Missouri crock diet and we'll cut their meat with that. Uh, we've also found out that uh, if you do salmon oil and uh, vitamin B complex, the liquid vitamin B complex, uh, it gives them a really nice skin, makes them have really healthy eyes. Before we started doing that, we were actually finding out that they would get stuff jammed in their eyes and you know, but now that we're getting that nice moisture into their system. Yeah, they're... from the salmon oil and vitamin B? Yep, vitamin B complex. Interesting. Okay. Uh, it, it makes them have really nice sheds and everything. Does that super energize them though? Like the vitamin B they put in like energy drinks? Maybe. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say is your favorite species to work with, both of you? Tegus. Yeah. Tegus? Definitely both of you? the tegu. Yeah. Well, sure. you're in the right business. Yeah. Wow, you have some beautiful animals Thank you. with Appreciate you today. It. If people want to learn more about the animals you have for sale, where can they go? Uh, you can go, Instagram's going to be the best, uh, Sacred Geckos and Exotics. We also do Facebook. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Hope thank you have a good show. from the Dragonwood Conservancy and they do amazing conservation work through education. So we have with us a broad snouted or broad front uh, broad nose. Broad nose, thank you. A couple different common Cayman. names. Yeah, Cayman, broad nose Cayman and a Cuban crocodile, which these are listed as endangered, aren't they? Very much so. Uh, as are these. As are those. Yep. Wow, so two different they endangered are, they species. They are both red listed. They are uh, the on IUCN. IUCN. Uh -huh. Okay. We have what I believe is the biggest group of Cuban crocodiles outside of Cuba. We have over 50 Cubans, and we are maintaining what amounts to a genetic bank of them. But what makes us unusual is the fact that we are private. 
We are a private, nonprofit entity working with critically endangered animals and threatened mm -hmm. animals. And for instance, these two little guys were produced at our facility. Oh, wow, really? Came in letter ostrus, crocodilus round before. We need to get young people involved. It doesn't mean you have to become a scientist, but learn more about the animals as they are. The animals that we're holding here in our hands are representative of success stories. So if people uh, want to learn more about Dragonwood Conservancy, where can they go? Where can they donate to help conserve and protect these, these animals? Well, we have a Facebook, Dragonwood Wildlife Conservancy. Something I learned from you just now is your wrists give off different pheromones based on if your hand is dominant or non-dominant. And the pheromones from Something your... Something people don't even think about. Yeah, yeah, I didn't think about this either, but the pheromones from your dominant hand are more of an aggressive type pheromone, right? Or like... Dominance, I guess. Yeah. So I'm holding in my non-dominant hand. And also you're supporting him very nicely here. And his tail is got a support there. Yep, yep. And look at that. Got a little chin rest. Yep, chin rest. <laughs> well, thank you for your time and hey. for teaching us about what you do. And uh, go check out uh, Dragonwood I, I love Conservancy. To teach. Yeah, but, uh, fantastic. Please help us out any way you can. It is 2.30, so we have an hour and a half to buy all of the stuff for our store wholesale and animals for our store. So we ran away from our booth, we reached the end of the line, we didn't just run away from people. And now we're trying to frantically buy things. Alright, we bought some wholesale animals, which is perfect. We found, I think, a new hornworm vendor for our shop, which is going to be hard top hornworms. Anyway, new vendor for our shop. I'm so sorry to the fans that we can't talk to right now that are trying to get selfies and stuff. We have half an hour until the show is over to buy all the stuff for our store, so I'm so sorry, but we're getting stuff. All right, show is over. It is 4.04, .04, so now we are packing up our tables and getting everything back in the bins. We bought what we needed for the shop and we, okay, I can't ignore you. Okay, got it. <laughs> we bought what we needed for the shop and we, I think, are good to go. I think we got what we needed. So we're just gonna pack everything up, head back to the hotel room and either show you what we got at the hotel room or when we're back at the facility. Successful show. We made it back to our facility. Hey, we're home. Hooray, we made it. And we would like to spend a couple minutes just showing you what all we're going home with from things that fans gave us we got very generously. With. Wait, what? What we got here with. We're already here. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> what we, yeah, exactly. So um, we have, we're going to start with stuff that very generous fans gave us. Like, you guys don't have to give us gifts. Just being able to meet you is a gift in of itself. So thank you for your thoughtful gifts, guys. We got beaver nuggets. Got a we bunch got of beaver nuggets. my favorite, the cheesy curls from Bucky's. Got like socks from Bucky's. There's jerky that was given to us. Tons of chocolate. I cannot wait. Looks I've... like you already ripped into that like a rodent. Yeah, I've already eaten two of them. <laughs> so um, I'm working my way through those. There was art that was given to us. So that's really cool. We hung a bunch of the art behind the uh We hung it throughout checkout. the weekend. Yeah, on the curtains behind our table. So we got to show it off to everybody. But there's coffee in here, which I'm very yeah, excited to try. Unicorn blood coffee. Unicorn blood coffee. I didn't yeah. realize it was that. Wow, I've never heard of that before. I just saw the bag and thought it looked really cool. Yeah. I think they, this person must have given it to you, yep. right? Yeah, I, I don't think they person. wanted to wait in line, so they're yeah. like, here, give this to Emily. They also were the ones who gave us the... Uh, oh, the jerky? The jerky. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry I couldn't chat with you because it was so busy, but thank you for the gifts. There's also, like, some Mexican bakery um, goodies that were given to us that we've already eaten. They were delicious. Yeah, I loved the, like, cinnamon croissant one. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. There was this bag that I was told not to open until right now on camera. So we have a bunch of... Oh, like, rodent enrichment? Yep. Perfect. We can totally use that. And... Oh my gosh. And a female gnome for Randy, the other gnome. Wait, is that a female? It I might assume. not be a female. It's just another gnome. It I likes to wear pink. I shouldn't assume here. just because it has pink. We'll put you right here. Perfect. There we go. There we go, part of the store. 
Nice. Now on to, so thank you everybody so much for the gifts. A lot of them we've already consumed, or I've already consumed, because it was a long drive home, so I ate a lot of chocolate on the way home. So thank you so much for that. Also, thank you to everybody who participated in the tie event. We saw so many cool and crazy ties throughout the weekend, so you guys are awesome. Thank you yep. so much. It's so humbling to meet everybody at these shows. Anyway, we have, I'll get into that more later, we have animals that we came home with too. Here are some animals we bought for retail, um, just because we know the breeders, we've worked with them before. We've got some um, ball pythons and boas from JC Peep Balls and Boas. We always buy from them because they have awesome snakes that yep. eat really well for us. The boas back now. Yeah, we've got a sharp, we've got albino motley, and for the first time, we got a snow morph boa. Yeah. I'm curious to see how long we'll have that one for. A couple other, got like pinstripe stuff, so just really pretty ball pythons. Yeah. Yeah, really pretty balls. We also got some Lichianus geckos. We picked up three lychees from a great yeah. breeder. Yeah, super cute. This was the breeder that had the Exanthic crested gecko, actually. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, so we got these for our store. They're awesome. We also move got. Move your tail a little bit. Yeah, move your tail. I don't want to pinch it. We also got some blue death feigning beetle. Aw. One died. One died. Oh, no. Aw. Just kidding. He's he's just how, faking how death. How did you let that happen? <laughs> I, I must. The movement. It was yeah, too much. It's too much. Yep. Oh, another one died just from that oh, little no. shake. <laughs> They're very dramatic. So we got some blue death feigning beetles. We also had a couple surrenders to our rescue while we were there including a musk turtle which we'll be adding to our zoo that's uh we're pretty excited for and we had two emerald tree skinks that were surrendered to the adoption program i'm going to leave them in here because they're not super tame or handleable but uh yeah two emerald tree skinks two males that i guess just weren't getting along with her other ones so she couldn't keep them anymore so we're going to quarantine them health check them and assuming they're healthy we'll be able to adopt them out we also got some Orchid mantises from Luke with Luke's Bug Adventures, and he gave us orchid mantises to sell in our store with the One proceeds. Right back there. There we go. Proceeds going to Adoption Island. So, oh yeah, here I can turn it around, <laughs> and then you can see it because they're really teeny right now. Yeah, they're super teeny. Oh, no. Go on, camera focus. There we go. That's how tiny they are. Yes. The camera can't even focus on them. Exactly. Uh, Luke also gave me a birthday present that I was not expecting. Check this out. This was so thoughtful of him. This is a rhino rat snake, a species I've always been curious about. Never really saw any available, so never really jumped on any. But he's in blue. And he's in blue, of course. <laughs> so Luke and his family bought a rhino rat snake, and they have a breeding group of their own now, too, so they're going to be raising some. And they've been handling this guy for, like, eight months in secret so that they could bring it to the show to give to us as my birthday gift that was so nice of them and he's super friendly too hi buddy yeah you're gonna be oh you look hungry oh, oh okay super friendly huh? super friendly oh super friendly it's okay bud you're all right i don't blame you you're in blue i'll push you back so we now have a rhino rat snake which is awesome uh we're gonna have fun building a cool enclosure for him so thank you so much luke and monal that was very generous of you, and I am so excited for him. Uh, we have for the zoo some glass frogs, because we figure they're a really neat species, and we needed to fill a frog enclosure. We already kind of filled you in on those, though. We got a vinegaroon just as a backup, because they don't live forever, so we want to have one on hand for when the time comes, because yep. we found one. We found a pair of mossy leaf-tailed geckos that we're going to put in the zoo. We had one in the zoo. It passed away because it was older, so we have a pair that we're going to put in there now. And we have a female underneath here. <laughs> A female red ackee monitor that we're gonna add to our zoo so we have a trio instead of just a male and a female. Um, and then, last but not least, Smugbug. Laura with Smugbug gave us so many isopods that. Yeah, it was insane. It was, it was crazy how many isopods she gave us as thanks for doing a video unboxing her isopods back in the day. She gave us, I'll show you the isopods in a second, but first, I'm gonna show you. She gave us so many supplements, calcium critters, like little gummy bear sized calcium blocks for isopods, various calcium cakes and That's other molds. This whole bag is this full of those. This bag is full of calcium blocks and multivitamin blocks and all sorts of other goodies. So I didn't even know that, that Smugbug carried these, but- I didn't know that either. These are awesome. They made a mold of like teddy bears. So you could eat like, you could eat them. I don't recommend eating them. I don't know how good they would taste. But yeah. They made molds and they made like little little 
buttons. Uh, buttons, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Little candy calcium buttons. How cute is that? And for the isopods. Show the springtails first. The spring oh, that's right. She gave us springtails too. Hang on. Okay, Laura gave us orange springtails, which I didn't know were a thing. I've heard of, I think, purple springtails or pink springtails, but never seen seen them and I had never even heard of these right here there's one I don't know if you Where? can see it on camera it's it's oh that's true we are looking at springtails oh, oh you see it let me see if I can focus in on it oh there, there. it's that little orange bug thing that's crawling away yeah, right now it's an orange springtail so used for bioactive enclosures yeah just cool to have a different color yeah that's really cool she also gave us some cubaris isopods this is the salmon cubaris. So here's one. Here's one of the salmon uh, isopods. They're like cousins of the uh, rubber duckies. So they're both in the cubaris genus. So you've got that more dome shaped body, and we have kind of the ducky face. The ducky face. Apparently they're twitchy. It's twitchy, yeah. I didn't know that they would be so twitchy, but that's just, I guess, how they are. So we've got the salmons to add to our collection. Yep. Smugbug also gave us white oh duckies. Those are adorable. Look at the white duckies. Oh my goodness, they're like little reverse pandas. Or re actually, they're like little reverse Oreos. <laughs> little white duggies. Super cute. Oh, look at you guys. Yeah. Okay, and we saved the best for last because Laura very generously gave us uh, mur Muricatum. Is that how you pronounce it? I think Muricatum. The first time I saw him was at the show. Yes, <laughs> and she gave us two cultures of the two starter cultures of these and emily find one yeah you're gonna love and then these pull them out when you can see them like this is the retail price on them guys there's 10 in here and they go for 500 dollars yeah and she gave us two of the two or three two two of these found one yeah he's little now i have to see if i can get him in focus these are like the macaroons of isopods they are covered in itty bitty spikes and they look so cute of course, he's curled up because he's scared right now. I don't know if you can even see him. I can see him. I don't know if I can see the spikes. We'll Here, have to try and get hang on. Like, the... I have an idea. What is your idea going to be? Put it on the Aki monitor. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to the Aki monitor? Yeah. <laughs> don't let him roll off. He is in a ball. Oh, you can see his little spikes. There you go. A little spiky isopod. Oh, yeah. my gosh. And these are from Spain, if I remember correctly, is what yeah. she's telling us. Yeah. Like a teeny little population in Spain, I guess. Yeah. And she imported a group of these, and now she's starting to breed them. Yeah, so you kicking off for her. Yeah, so she kind of wants to spread the love, I guess. Yeah. And she's just a very, very generous person. So if you want a really kind-hearted isopod breeder to get isopods or cool springtails from, go check out Smugbug. Laura is amazing. Wait, where's, where's the stickers? Oh, he's starting oh. to come out. Never mind. <laughs> Anyway, also she has a bunch of stickers she gave us, a bunch of cool stickers. Yeah, so this is her her logo, Smugbug. Scrub-a-dub-dub. -dub. We've got Supermom, because this species kind of takes care of their babies, she was explaining to us. We've got Clowning Around, <laughs> complete with the balloon. Yep, we have yeah, Dark Clowning Around. Yeah, I love that. All float down here. <laughs> <laughs> I support you. That's I love awesome that. One. That is fantastic. Oh, got that one already. Oh, here we go. Pearl of the Soil. <laughs> Look at this, just curled up. We've got prehistoric boys, which is actually pretty accurate. They've yep. been around forever. And we've got dirt shrimp. Awesome. <laughs> so yeah, if you're looking for a really good-hearted business to get awesome isopod stickers from, or, or isopods or cool springtails, please check out Smugbug. She is one of the nicest people in the industry. For we sure. might be going up there sooner or later to film at her facility. That'd be so cool. Apparently Make there's like 800 tubs or something like that. Of isopods which at is her facility. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, so <laughs> more to come in the future with Smugbug. So yeah, that's everything we got other than products. We got, I mean, oh, yeah. down here. We got, uh, we got a bunch of stuff from Reptile Basics down here. Uh, some hatch stuff, some Arcadia bulbs, heat panels, you know, the stuff we yeah. normally come home with. Stuff to sell in the store. We got some more shirts. Those are the shirts that didn't sell. Yeah, a bunch we didn't of merch. Sell, didn't sell everything, but that's okay. That means we brought enough for everybody to get what they wanted. Oh, so. we also got False Bottom. So oh. anybody who's in the area who's been yeah. looking for False Bottom, <laughs> right, we, have, we it have it now. Thank you guys so much for watching. The Schomburg Show was a blast. It was exhausting, but it was a blast. The last thing we want to show you before we wrap up this video is this amazing Gila Monster framed uh, picture that we got from the auction. And yep. all the uh, proceeds went to US Arc, so that was pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah, we had a good time. Thank you for watching. It was amazing meeting all of you. It was very humbling, very yes. humbling to see how many people wanted to come and meet us. So thank you for coming. Thank you, Patreon backers, for your very generous support. And we'll see you next time. We're not keeping that, though, are we?
No, it's going to be a present for we're, somebody. Yeah, we're gifting that to somebody. That's yeah. right. Mm, we're not going to say who, though, because yeah. they might be watching They're this. They're probably watching. 